Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. In this video, I would like to talk about the Hulsey interior, which we got to take a look at thanks to Star Citizen Leaks Discord. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. It is because of these guys that I get to make these kinds of videos. So if you do enjoy my content and would like to support the channel even further, all the links are in the description below. It is very much appreciated. Also, be sure to subscribe and comment with what you're excited for for 3.10, as we do have a Mantis standalone ship to give away, courtesy of my channel member, The Doctor. That will be drawn on the 27th. So this footage was thanks to the Star Citizen Leaks Discord channel and Sir Piggles, taken from their most recent live stream. I have linked their Twitch, YouTube and Discord channels below. Be sure to give them a follow as this is where I get all my leaked information from. The footage also shows off the Bengal carrier in the background, which is insanely big. And we may take a closer look at that in another video. Let me know if that's something you would like to see. So things to point out before we do get into the video. These assets, I believe they said were two years old. I think it's safe to say that the Hulsey is practically complete as an asset, but now we are just awaiting certain tech limitations like docking and the sort of cargo boxes, making sure that they don't have to replicate thousands of cargo boxes in one go for performance reasons. The aesthetics and textures are probably a lot more polished than what we see here, but it's likely safe to assume that the layout will remain the same. So looking inside the ship itself, we start with the cockpit and the layout looks identical to that of the Starfarer minus the two rear consoles. Actually, there is a lot of similarities between the Starfarer and the Hull C, which you would expect with them both being made by MISC. Everything is slightly raised, by the way, which is really only noticeable in the cockpit. I can't remember the reasoning for this, but it does look like you have a captain's seat in the center and a pilot and co-pilot. Now, the maximum crew for the Hull C is four, and I'll show you a fourth station if we exclude the engineer role. From the cockpit, you head through the door and either side appears to be the docking collars and escape pods. Now, I'm not sure if they're escape pods on either side. It looks like they are. It could just be on one side and then something else on the opposite. But there are two rooms as you exit the cockpit. Do let me know what you think either room could be for. There's definitely one with a docking collar and escape pods. Now, when you go up the ladder or elevator shaft to the upper level, this is the habitation deck. There is a mess hall, which again is very similar to the Starfarer with a kitchen area and dining table. The only difference being that there are four bunks and a bathroom in the same room. Do note the heavy misc design language as well with those large orange pipes. Now I'm really liking the look of the mess hall and habitation room. Being combined is fine as it serves the purpose for potential long duration flights and it's going to be fun doing these super long hauls from system to system. Opposite to the habitation area, though, is a seat with multiple MFDs and controls. Now, as I said before, this, I believe, is the fourth crew station. It almost looks like another flight seat without the yoke, but I do wonder what this is for. If I was to hazard a guess, I would say it could be for the spindle and cargo control room. Could be a security room with cameras, but that's very, very unlikely. Seems to be facing forwards, and with the whole series being cargo hauling specific, it is likely you're going to be along those lines. Do let me know what you think it could be for. As I say, spindle, cargo, manifest control, that sort of stuff is what I think it is. Now back down the ladder and heading towards the rear, it leads through a connected tunnel, which is what holds the cargo spindles and extends as the spindles open up. Now I can just imagine walking down from the front end to the back, which will be so incredible. Also, I do wonder how long it will be once the ship extends. Obviously at the moment it is contracted. Not to mention how long will this tunnel be when you go through on the Hull E. Did I hear something a little while ago about them mentioning maybe a shuttle to take you from one end to the next of the Hull E? I can't remember if that is what was said, but do let me know if I've dreamt that or if it's actually legit. But I can just imagine finding a derelict hull C, D or E and walking down this long corridor with only a torchlight. That is going to be so cool. Now as you get to the rear, this is the engineering section where you can see the aesthetic changes somewhat from that of the habitation. You have what appears to be the engines on either side leading down to an engineering console on the right and an elevator to take you to the other decks. This is deck one. I expect this is the place where the engineer would spend most of their time using this console to monitor the systems and diagnose any issues that may arise. There looks to be about three decks in total with the engineering section and then two decks with the cockpit and habitation area. Up to deck two, it looks to be where most of the components are housed 
And as soon as you go through the doorway, there is a door on the right hand side. My guess would be a server room, maybe and hopefully some storage room for new components in case you need to have any spares on board, but most likely for your server computer area. Now, as they head through deck two, you can see all the slots for the components like the power plant, quantum drive, coolers, shield generators, everything seems to have a place there. Back to the elevator and up to deck three, it looks like it gives you access to the exterior gangway and what could be an escape pod or a bathroom. I would probably go with an escape pod. So rather than the engineer having to run the full length of the ship to get to the escape pods, they have their own. Similar to what it's like on the Starfarer, they have their own escape pod in the engineering department. Now the exterior gangway, unfortunately we don't get to see how far this goes round. I think it was just literally like a balcony for the engineer, maybe to get some air, I don't know. But anyway, from here, they sort of showed off a bit more of the exterior, which we have seen before. We also got to see where the spindles are tucked away inside, but they have released the exterior officially in a more completed state, in fact. But this is the first time we're really seeing the full layout of the Hulsey interior. We have seen separate shots of it, but it, nothing really comes together to give you an example of what the layout is. Now, as I said before, I don't expect the layout to change too much but I am loving the interior and I think it'll be very fun working on board one of these. The interior layout will likely change slightly for each of the whole series, but not drastically, just subtle variations to accommodate the size increases or decreases. For the whole A and B, I don't think they are meant to have all the amenities as say the whole C and above, as they are generally not long haul freighters for long periods of time. But we may see additions to the whole D and hull E because they are significantly bigger than the whole C. But with that said, let me know what your impressions of the whole C's interior are. And again, a huge thank you to the Star Citizen Leaks team for bringing us this footage. Make sure you hit that subscribe button here on my YouTube to keep up with all of the news and leaks of Star Citizen. Plus, tick that notification bell so you know when my videos go live. Hit the like button if you're excited for the whole C. And if you want to talk more about this ship or anything Star Citizen, head over to Super Mac Brothers Ryan on Twitch. Again, thank you to my patrons and channel members for all of the support. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.